Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Bartek Skorupa and today I'm going to focus on one note that is called color correction. Shift A, color, color correction. We have several sliders available here and some of them seem obvious, but another ones may appear a bit mysterious. So let's analyze all this basing on columns and rows. When we take a look at the rows, we see that we have the section Master, Highlights, Midtones and Shadows. So it's rather logical that all of the sliders that are in the Master row will influence all of the image, those sliders will influence the Highlights, those the Midtones and those the Shadows. And we can control the saturation, contrast, gamma, gain and lift. As you can see, we can influence the red channel of the image, green channel of the image or the blue channel of the image and by default all of the channels here are activated. Okay, so before we begin to control highlights, midtones and shadows independently, let's try to understand what those terms mean and what they do. And I will analyze them using the master sliders. Saturation seems obvious. When we increase this value, we simply boost the saturation. When we decrease it, our image becomes less saturated. Contrast is also rather intuitive. When we increase it, our image becomes more contrasty. When we decrease it, it begins to be a little bit washed out. So when we increase the contrast, bright areas become even brighter and dark areas become even darker. When we decrease it, we are darkening the bright areas and brightening the dark areas. When we set the contrast all the way down to zero, we see that all of the image became gray. And when we take a look at the values of those pixels, here we have the values, you see that red, green and blue channels are all the same and their values are set to 0.5. Okay, so now let's focus on gamma, gain and lift. Let's increase the gamma and we see that the image became a little bit brighter. When we increase the gain, it also brightens the image, but you see that it does it a little bit differently. Let's compare. This is what happens when we increase the gamma and this is what happens when we increase the gain. Lift value also increases the brightness of the image, but in a complete different manner than the gamma and gain. And then we can individually control highlights, midtones and shadows. So here we are increasing the saturation of the shadows. As you can see, only the dark areas became more saturated and all of the rest remained untouched. Let's now decrease the contrast of the midtones or darken the highlights using one of those three sliders. But which one to choose? Most of the artists use the trial and error method. So they simply move the sliders left and right and see if they like the result. So, okay, let's set it to this value, this one to this value or something else and let's move this one left, right. And when we get something that we like, we say, fine, we are done. And we don't have to care much what all of those terms mean. Gamma, gain, lift, who cares? Well, there is another group of artists who do care and want to know exactly what the sliders do such that next time they can control them better without wondering what will happen. So if you are this kind of an artist, this tutorial is addressed to you. But if you are happy with trials and errors, there are only three things more that you need to know to use this note. That is what those two sliders mean and what is the mask. Those two sliders, midtones start and midtones end, determine what is the range for the shadows, midtones and highlights. So by default, everything that's lightness is below 0.2 is considered as the shadows. Everything between 0.2 and 0.7 are the midtones and all of the values of the lightness above 0.7 are considered to be the highlights. There is, however, some fall off. So when we are controlling the highlights, not only the values above 0.7 will be influenced, but the fall off will also cause some lower values to be influenced. And we can simply move those sliders to set some other ranges. And then the last thing is the mask. We can plug some mask here and this will cause the node to influence only the areas determined by this mask. If we don't plug anything here, we can use this slider so when it's set to 1, the influence of this node will be 100%. When we lower it, we simply decrease the influence of this node. So let's lower the value of the master contrast 
And now when we decrease the mask value, you see that we decrease the influence of all of those adjustments. But we can also plug something here. Let's create the mask. So here in UV image editor, we can change this option from view to mask. Let's create new mask and we can simply draw the mask. When we control left click, we are adding the points of the masks. To close the mask, we can hit Alt C. When we want some additional points, we simply hover the mouse over the line, control click, and we have the additional points. We control the points exactly the same as we control vertices in 3D viewport. So we grab them using the G key. When we hit S, we scale those handles. We can rotate, but this is not the masking tutorial. So I have in advance prepared some mask and it's this one. And I will show you how to use it as an input of color correction note. So here in note editor, shift A, input, mask. Let's move it here. Let's select our mask and plug it here. So now when we do any adjustments to the values of those sliders, only the area inside the mask will be influenced. Let's increase the master gain, for example. And you see that only this area got brightened. Okay, so this concludes the part for the ones who don't care how the things work. And now I will begin to be a little bit more technical. So please watch the rest of the tutorial only if you want to know why this behaves differently than this and then this. I will first explain the terms gain, gamma and lift. However, there is one thing that I want to point out here. In color correction note, gamma, gain and lift terms are used to describe what those sliders do. But unfortunately, those names here are misleading. The terms that should be used here are gamma, slope and offset. So first I will quickly explain what gamma gain and lift are, then what slope and offset are. So the next time you move any of those sliders, you will exactly know what to expect. Okay, so when we are adjusting the colors of the images, when we are color grading, no matter what applications we are using, there are several algorithms that are used. Two most common ones are the lift gamma gain concept, and offset power slope. This one is mostly used to exchange the grades. Those letters here, ASC, CDL, mean American Society of Cinematographers color decision list. So this is in fact the exchange format. We can make our grade, save it in this format, give it to some other artist, and if the application that he uses reads this format, he will be able to use exactly the same grade as we did. In Blender, we don't have the ability to export CDL or import CDL. I told you about this just so that you know what those letters mean. Okay, let's change it to Lift Gamma Gain. This is the system used in many color grading tools. And exactly this model is used in color balance node. When we control the lift, we are mostly influencing the shadows of the image. But you will notice that the highlights and midtones are also influenced, but a little bit less. When we control the gain, the highlights are influenced the most and the shadows the least. Gamma mostly influences the midtones. I will explain how it works using the RGB curves node. So here we have our color balance node and here we have RGB curves. So when we increase the lift, the equivalent of this in RGB curves is this. When we decrease the gain, that's the equivalent in RGB curves. When we change the gamma, let's increase the gamma, we are doing this. When we decrease the gamma, we are doing this. So as you can see, gamma influences midtones the most, but it also influences the highlights and the shadows. Gain influences mostly the highlights, but all of the other ranges are also influenced. And the same applies to lift. Okay, so let's now say that we set the lift value, we will increase the lift value by 0.2. The default value here is set to 1, so let's set it to 1.2. And at the same time, we will decrease the gain value. Let's set it to 0 
If we want to get the equivalent of this operation in RGB curves, it would be logical to move this point to 0 0.2 and this point to 0 0.8. This, however, will not give you exactly the same result as moving those sliders like this. In order to recreate this behavior of color balance node using the RGB curves node, we have to do something like this. Let's move this point all the way up. So here we changed only the lift. Now we have to add another RGB curves node, move this point all the way down and set the gain to 0.8. And this way we should get exactly the same result as we have here. But as you can see, we have differences. The differences come from the fact that this model that I am showing you right now is a little bit simplified. Here, not only those operations occur, but also some translations between the color models. Here, we are working on the linear color values. And here, some additional calculations are made, such that this node mimics better the behavior of similar color wheels in color grading applications that don't work in linear color space, but in other color spaces. But I will not go much deeper into it. This is all related to color management issues. So let's forget about all those differences and simply analyze this simplified model. The purpose of this is to understand what's going on without introducing too many terms. Okay, so here we have two RGB curves node. This one is responsible for lift, this one for gain. Let's add another one and here we will control the gamma. So let's say that we want to decrease the gamma. This is what we do. And this describes the order in which all of those operations are performed. So when we are using lift gamma gain model, lift adjustments are introduced as the first. Then gain works on the result of the lift adjustments. And gamma is applied as the last operation. So this one is lift, this is gain, and this is gamma. The order of those operations have the influence on the final image. Let's duplicate those nodes and change the order and see what happens. In this case, I will first do the gain adjustments, then the lift, followed by gamma. So let's cut those connections, reconnect this one here, link those ones, and that's the result when we use lift first, then gain, and then gamma, and this is the result when we used a different order. The difference is not that dramatic, but you can see that it's not exactly the same. Okay, let's delete those ones. So this is how lift gamma gain model works, and let's now take a look at the second one, which is offset power slope. I have reset all of those values to default value of 1. So when we use the lift gamma gain model, here we see exactly the same image as the original. Now, when we change this model to offset power slope, whoops, something weird has happened. And this is only because the offset value should be set to 0, and those are the values that don't change the original image. As you can see, the names here changed. This is called offset, this is called power, and this is called slope. At a first glance, slope works exactly the same as the gain used in this other model. Let's now take a look at the power. When we increase the power value, the image gets darker. When we decrease it, it gets brighter. So the influence of the middle wheel is exactly opposite to what happens when we use lift gamma gain model. So this one still influences highlights the most. This one still influences midtones the most, but this influence is opposite. And how about this one? Logically, it should influence the shadows the most, but it's not so. When we increase the offset value, all of the values get exactly the same influence. This, in fact, adds this value to the values of the original colors. So when we set this one to 0.2, let's say, the equivalent of this in RGB curves would be this. This point is moved to 0.2 and this one to 1.2. But it's impossible to move it this way, so the equivalent would be something like this. 
and the order of those operations is different than in lift gamma gain model. So slope highlights are influenced first, then offset is done, and then the power. Power is exact opposite of the gamma. So if power is this, gamma is this. If the power is this, gamma is this. So this was the brief explanation of lift gamma gain models and offset power slope. And when we go to our color correction node, we simply need to know that those names here are not correct. Gamma is gamma, so this is okay. But here it is not gain, but slope. Here it is not lift, but offset. So this one influences midtones the most. This one influences highlights the most. This one influences all of the image. And the operations are performed in the following order. First, the slope adjustments are made. Then the offset. And as the last one, gamma. I hope that in some near future those names here will be changed to really describe what those sliders do, or maybe the behavior will change to the proper lift gamma gain. So now when we think about it, here we have gain or slope, it is slope, and it can be referred to as the highlights. So what happens here? We are adjusting the highlights of the highlights, or here we are adjusting midtones of the midtones. Well, it may be a little bit confusing, but what is really happening in all of those sliders for highlights, midtones and shadows is this. Those sliders control all of the image, in fact. It doesn't matter that this slider is in the highlights row. All of the image is influenced, but then it's kind of masked. So it's mixed, those adjustments are mixed into the original image using a certain factor, which is determined by two of those sliders. Okay, so as you can see, this color correction note is a little bit complicated by itself. Some things are not that obvious. And in addition to it, we have not correct names here. I personally don't use this note very often, but I think that it's simply good to know what we have to our disposal and how the things work inside this note. Now, the ranges here. Even if we, for example, decide to use only the red channel, so let's disable green and blue, the ranges here are based on the lightness of the whole image, not on the lightness of the red channel in this case. So this is just something to be aware of. And those values are the values of the lightness. When we take a look at any color, let's add the RGB input node here, we can use RGB or HSV, which is hue saturation value. It's good to be aware that value is something different than the lightness. And here, not values are used, but lightness. But I will not go deeper into it. I explain in details what is the difference between the value, lightness, luminance, brightness in one of the episodes of Compositing in Blender DVD series available here on CG Cookie. So that would be all in this video. I hope I didn't make things too complicated and you will find at least some of the informations here useful. Thank you very much, Bartek Skorupa for BlenderCookie.com. Take care and see you next time.